All right, welcome to the Friday night Spirit of Prophecy Church Bible study. And uh, I'm going to tell you how I came up with this message today. Um, <clears throat> the way I normally do, just like on Sunday mornings, I've got a specific place, place that I go to kneel and pray. And this time, I just sat in my chair, closed my eyes, bowed my head, and just asked in my heart. Nothing coming out my lips. And I heard Amos 3. I looked at Amos 3 and I thought, nah. Okay, we better do it right. So I went in, like I said, got on my knees, did some worship. Lord, what do you want to say? Amos 3. I thought, okay, I'm probably just not hearing. So I went back, <clears throat> started reading Amos 3, and I thought, you know what? Maybe I'm not hearing tonight. Maybe we need to just continue with uh, Corinthians chapter 7, I believe it is. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, where we left off last week. So I pulled up <laughs> I pulled up 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I started reading that, and I got a yawn. So I thought, eh, maybe it's not God talking. You know, you always doubt yourself. And so I kept reading. <clears throat> I got another yawn. So I went back and I knelt down again, Lord, I, I just felt it when he touched me again. Lord, what do you want to say to your people? It's your people, it's your kingdom, it's your word. What do you want to say? And I heard Amos 3. Okay, what in Amos 3? Okay, you tell them that this is a word for America because America is about to get hit with a really bad storm, then go to Daniel 7, then to Revelation 13, and possibly Revelation 19 and 20. And you laid in my heart some things to bring to you. And so that's what I'm going to bring to you. Um, and that's, I, I want what he wants. I, I feel annoying already coming on me. So I believe that this is going to be a real powerful Bible study. So let's pray because... <clears throat> I really believe that we can't understand the Word of God, even though it's ink on paper, even though it's electronic images on a screen, we cannot understand it without the Spirit of God. So, Lord, <clears throat> you did say that wherever two are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of them. And Lord, right now we have four of us gathered. Well, no, there's four, <laughs> over 50 people gathered. So, Lord, we... <clears throat> We ask you to be with us. Wisdom and might are yours. You change the times and seasons. You removeth kings and setteth up kings. You giveth wisdom to the wise and knowledge of them that know understanding. You revealeth the deep and secret things. You knoweth what is in the darkness. <clears throat> and, the light, and the light dwelleth with you. Lord, we ask you to show us the deep and secret things. Help us to understand what you're saying to us tonight. And also to the people in the future that may be listening to this recording, speak to their hearts, Lord. <clears throat> I know that you have an important message to bring us tonight. And Lord, we want to say, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who is and was and who is to come. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who is and was and who is to come. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the Aleph and the Tav the self-existent one, the light of life, the everlasting to the everlasting. We know that your heart is to give and not to pull down, not to destroy. Your heart is to bless. You made heaven and the things that therein are and the earth and the things that therein are and the sea and the things that are therein. You are the giver, the giving God that loves us and wants to bless us. If we'll just follow you, and keep your commandments. Lord, we ask you to help us to do that. Lord, show us what you want to say tonight. Help us to understand it. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. <clears throat> so, see if I got this right. Ha, ha. I figured there was a way to just get into this faster. It was all good to me. <laughs> Look at my new toy. I found out how to do it. All right. So, here we are. Amos 3. And by the way, my apologies again. I'm having to use a stupid microphone on the little 
uh, camera on top of my monitor and it's trash. It's junk compared to the good one. But my new mixer has not arrived yet. It's supposed to arrive tomorrow on Saturday. Hopefully by the time you hear your Tuesday broadcast, we'll be back to the good microphone. But until then, we'll have to suffer through. So anyway, Amos 3. <clears throat> now, what he told me to tell you is that this is a word from the Lord directly to America with the things that are coming right now that are about to hit. And in case you haven't heard, Israel has built a big altar and they plan uh, according to, um, I guess I could show you, but I'll just tell you, according to Hal Turner, the Israel is planning to sacrifice the first red hef heifer a week from today, March 29th on Good Friday. Well, that's what they call it. Of course, now, whatever the day is, Marty Breeden. Well, I'm very blessed, brother, to see you listening. I'm very blessed. This is a great man of God that has heard from the Lord on a lot of occasions. So, Marty, hello, dear brother, and God bless you, and thank you for being on. Okay, so, <clears throat> again, a word of the Lord for America. Now, he's speaking directly to Israel, but just like with some time with your children, you say something to one child and you turn around, well, that kind of fits you too. And that's the situation here. This kind of fits America too. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you. In other words, God is not pleased with our nation right now. Oh, children of, I would say, America, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Now, that's true of Israel, but it's second true for America because we were, as a matter of fact, we're going to go to Daniel chapter 7, and I'll show you this here in just a second. We were a nation that was not a nation, but God picked us up and made us a nation. And we're number two. We are the nation that is supposed to be the big brother to Israel, the protector of Israel. We're supposed to be the city that is shining on the hill, carrying the gospel to the world, and we have failed. As Well, we'll get into that later. Okay, so let me go on. <clears throat> you, you only have a known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all of your iniquities. Can two walk together except they agreed? Will a lion roar in the forest when he hath no prey? In other words, when he's hungry, yes, he, he, will, he will roar. Will a young lion cry out of his den if he had taken nothing? In other words, if he's hungry too, yes, he will. Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin is for him? Again, they're looking for food. Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall a trumpet be blown to the city and the people lean up, be not afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord hath not done it? Now, the way we would say that is, can there be trouble? Can there be judgment in the city? Can there be things falling apart and it's not the Lord? No. When, when, when the Lord blesses, he blesses. And then when we fall away, it's his hand. Um, Deuteronomy 32 says, I kill, I make alive. I wound, I heal. And now the canini deliver out of my hand. Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord hath not done it? What he's saying is the things that are about to hit our nation, it's not the Russians. It's not the evil deep state. It's the hand of God. <clears throat> because just like the problems at our southern border, none of that could happen without the approval of the Lord. Surely the Lord God would do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Now, that's saying exactly what it says. In other words, before God does something, brings judgment on a nation, he brings warning. And this is part of that warning. The lion hath roared, who will not fear. The Lord hath spoken, who can but prophesy. Publish in the palaces at Ashdod and the palaces in the land of Egypt and say, assemble yourselves on the mountains of Samaria. The way we would say that today Tell the people on the internet, tell the people in the churches, tell the people every place you possibly can that this judgment is about to come on in your land. But of course, America won't hear. For they, not, they know not to do right, true. 
saith the Lord, who store up violence and robbery in their palaces. <clears throat> well, okay, so Lake and Riley was killed by, I mean, there's so much evil in our nation. They're robbing stores right now. Stores are shutting down because they can't keep their doors open. They can't put up with people coming in and just stealing thousands of dollars worth of, of their goods and not paying for them. They, they won't work, okay? Thus saith the Lord, verse 12, as the shepherd taketh out of the mouth of the lion two legs, or a piece of an ear, so shall the children of Israel be taken out that dwell in Samaria, in the corner of the bed, and in Damascus, in a couch. In other words, when God's going to bring the judgment, he's going to bring the judgment, and you're not going to stop it. Hear ye and testify in the house of Jacob, saith the Lord God, the God of hosts, that in the, in the day that I shall visit the transgressors of Israel upon him, I will also visit the altars of Bethel. Now, obviously, they had altars there. And when they put the altar up, what would they be worshiping? Well, I can't say that M word. <laughs> I just heard that another prophecy ministry larger than this one just got their channel deleted because they were talking about the M word. And you can find that M word to know what I'm talking about in Exodus 32, 4. Exodus 32, 4. So I've, I've, I've learned my lesson. That's why they deleted our channel. So I'm not going to say that word anymore because uh, I want to continue to bring the warning. <clears throat> anyway, so they're worshiping other gods. That's the point that I'm trying to make. 11. Yeah, 11. Right, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, an adversary there shall be even round about the land. True, we have adversaries all around us right now. Not just Russia, Cuba, Nicaragua, Central America, Mexico, North Korea, Iran. I mean, we have all kinds of people angry at us. Even around he shall bring down thy strength from thee, and thy palaces shall be spoiled. Thus saith the Lord, as the shepherd taketh out of the mouth of the lion two legs or a piece of an ear, so shall the ch children of Israel be taken out that dwell in Samaria in the corner of a bed and in Damascus in a couch. He's going to remove a lot of people. I believe that the good people that God is going to remove and they're going to be taken to Israel. Uh, I've told you this a lot of times. I'll tell you one more time. So probably, I don't know, 20 years ago, <clears throat> I had a dream. And first of all, uh, first of all, I saw a, I looked down on a, 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 a plane, a jet plane. And in the dream, it was about like yay long. And I saw a little stairway and people going up there. And I was looking down on it. And the voice said, two men will get on a plane with a virus. And before the plane can land, everyone on board will be dead. This will be the beginning of the end of, of, um, of public, air, public air transportation. I mean, I actually heard that with my ear. <clears throat> and uh, and I said, what? And it said, you weren't listening. That's what my wife tells me. I do a lot, too. And so it repeated. Two men would get on a plane with the virus. Before the plane can land, everyone on board will be dead. This will be the beginning of the end of public air transportation. I couldn't figure out why I would be told that for a long time, but now I know. That is when he wants me to be able to buy an airline. I didn't say an airplane, I want to buy an airline. And he's also arranged me to meet another fella. Um, name's not coming to my mind right now. And uh, we're going to go globally and we're going to invite people that are Christians to go to Israel where they're, we're going to build, build a land of unwalled villages and a place for Christians to hopefully exist a little bit longer as we go through this tribulation. So back to the scriptures. Hear ye and testify in the house of Jacob, or in this case, America, saith the Lord God, the God of hosts, in that day that I shall visit the transgressions of America upon him. I will also visit the Beth altars of Bethel, and the horns of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. So all of the idols that America has, and you may be saying, oh, we don't have idols. Oh, yes, we do. Once you go to Wall Street and you look at that bull, what do you think that bull is? That bull is an idol. That I, and it's the, the idol of the word that I can't say. Let's go on. And I will smite the winter house and the summer house and the houses of ivory shall perish. 
and the great houses shall have an end, saith the Lord. So these big, nice buildings that we see in New York City and many of the nation's uh, greatest buildings, greatest cities, he's saying he's going to tear them down. Verse 4, chapter 4. Hear this word, ye kind of Bashan, that are in a mountain of Samaria, which oppress the poor, which crush the needy, which say to their masters, bring and let us drink. Do we party in America? That's all we want to do. I mean, we want to go to the ball games and have our beer. And okay, okay, I know that some of that's not bad. I understand that. But when we don't go to church, we don't worship God, we don't read the Bible, we don't pray, we don't think, then those things are in the way. And that's America. The Lord God has sworn by his holiness that lo, the day shall come upon you that he will take away with hooks and your prosperity with fish hooks. So he's going to take the blessings away that he has given to America. And you shall go out at the breaches, every cow at that which is before her, and you shall cast them into the palace, saith the Lord. Now, uh, let me jump now to Daniel. I keep doing that wrong. I want to just hang on. I'll get this down one of these days. Daniel chapter 7. <clears throat> this is talking about the rise of world government primarily and the rise of the Antichrist. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my night vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea. Now, the sea, we know from Revelation 17, 10, I believe it is, that the sea is people, people, nations, and languages, and tongues. Came up uh, out of the sea, diverse one from another, meaning each one of these, the way I describe it is they are superpowers, the last superpowers, and they're diverse one from another, and I'll explain that. The first was like a lion, that would be England, and it had eagle's wings. Coming out of England was America. God raised up America primarily out of England and other people from other nations came too. I beheld till the wings there were plucked. Now, a long time ago, I used to think, oh, that was the fall of America. Actually, no, that's not what it's talking about. I beheld till the wings there were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon the feet of a man and a man's heart was given to it. Means that people, Christians, were plucked from around the world and lifted up and made a nation that was not a nation. So when it says, and a made to stand upon its feet as a man, it was made a nation that was not a nation, and a man's heart was given to it. Probably Americans have the biggest heart of any nation in the world. We help people, help people, and help people. And we're supposed to. Verse 5. And behold, another beast, a second like unto a bear, Okay, so what was the first superpower? That would be England, and then next was America, and then next to rise was the bear, the Russian bear. Second line can do a bear and raise itself up on one side. It had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said thus, arise and devour much flesh. It's going to show you in just a minute that when the Antichrist rises, he overcomes three nations. That's what it's talking about with the three ribs. That's one of the first things we're going to be able to spot the Antichrist by is when we see him rise to, he will be the world ruler. And as he rises, part of his rise will be he will overcome three nations. And yes, Russia's killed a lot of people in the past. But Revelation is not talking about the past. It's trying to tell us about the near future. So when it says arise, devour much flesh, it's saying Russia is going to kill a lot of people. Now, I can make an argument to show you that I believe the Antichrist is going to be Muslim. He won't be, but his parents will be. He will come from a Muslim country. I can make argument for that. And I can also make argument that he's going to come from the area of Syria and northern Iraq. But... I can also show you in the Bible where he's probably coming from Russia, <laughs> Gog and Magog and all of that. So oof. one thing we can spot him by is when he is elected world ruler. All questions gone then. But on the way, we can spot him 
but when he overcomes, they'll form in Europe at first. They'll have 10 nations that will form a, like a united Europe, and it will eventually go to be a united world, 10 nation confederacy. But on his rise, he will overcome three other nations. And I know a lot of people are saying Macron's the Antichrist right now. A lot of people were saying Reagan was the Antichrist or Gorbachev. So, I mean, a lot of people guess a lot of things. But what we can see is when he is world ruler, that's him. But if you want to spot him a little earlier, when you see him rise and overcome three other nations of the Ten Nation Confederacy, I'll show you in just a minute. That's what it's saying here. After this, I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had on the back of it four wings of a fowl. This one has not been fulfilled. I know there's a lot of people starting to say, man, we're in the tribulation. I can't say for sure when the tribulation. This is the third beast. How can we have the, the fourth beast, which is the world government, if we haven't even had the third beast? So it says, like a leopard. Okay, who's the leopard? Uh, that would be Muslims. Well, how do you know, Stan? We'll go in and do a little research, look up where leopards live. Then look up where Muslims live. Print the maps, overlay them, and you'll find out that they overlay almost perfectly. Then you look at the way Muslims live and the way leopards live, and you find out they're almost exactly the same. Leopards live in caves, and a lot of Muslims live in caves. Now, a lot of them now have risen out of that, has some really nice homes now, but if you look back in antiquity, the caves and tents and things like that. Also, if you look the, at their breeding habits and their fighting habits, like a leopard doesn't fight the other, doesn't fight face to face. It runs and it tries to catch the other prey when its back is turned. And that's what they tell me in Iraq. You know, you walk by someone in Iraq, one of the Muslims, and they'll run when they see your face, but then they'll run to fight another day. They have a phrase, but they'll stab you in the back. So the leopard is Islam, I believe which had on the back of it four wings of a fowl, and the beast had four heads, and dominion was given to it. So we have not seen a group of four nations that are Muslim rise, each nation having a head, but they work together as one. That's called the caliphate. They've been talking about it, but it's not, it's not formed yet, in my opinion. After this, I saw in the night visions, behold, a fourth beast. There's your world government. There's when that one is formed, the person that leads that, that will be the Antichrist. Behold, the fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, had great iron teeth. Iron, well, the iron kingdom, if you go back to Jan Daniel chapter 2, that is Rome or Babylon, which is primarily Europe. So that's telling you he's going to come out of Europe. Great iron teeth, it devoured and break in pieces, to stamp the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. Okay, so... It's not like the English lion. It's not like the American eagle. It's not like the Russian bear. It's different. And I agree, something coming out of Europe, a European superpower would be different, right? Diverse from all the beasts that were before it. Does it sound like I've been teaching this for a long time? Uh, I've been studying this for 40 years, man. It was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and had 10 horns. 10 horns. Okay, what's a horn? It's leaders. That's a, a, a horn is a leader. So it had 10 horns, so it's 10 nation confederacy. Each one of the regions has a ruler. I consider the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn. There's your antichrist. How do you know it's a man? Because it says it in just a second. Before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, this horn were in in this horn were the eyes like the eyes of a man. Man, I've had people say, oh, no, yeah, that, the Antichrist is not, is not a man. It's just, you know, where they cause people to take, uh, you know, it has to do with the money system. And it, it, they, what they explain is like, what? Where are you getting this? Clearly says it's a man, okay? I mean, he said it in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. <laughs> what is that? That's a human being. What's he sitting on? Well, it's not just a chair. It's the throne of God. That's what Lucifer wants to do. Okay, let's go on. I consider the horns. Behold, there come up among them another little horn, before him who three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were the eyes like the eyes of a mouth and a man, and a mouth speaking great things. I'm going to go to Revelation 13 in just a minute. I'm going to show you those words right here. A mouth speaking great things. Remember that. 
I'll show you that in Revelation 18 too. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. That's the Father. Okay, what does that mean? In other words, at the end of time, when all of the other thrones of the world are thrown down, then the Ancient of Days sits. What does he do? He brings the uh, he brings Jesus uh, and before him, and he is given glory, dominion, and a kingdom. For his dominion is everlasting dominion, his kingdom is that which shall not be destroyed, that all people, nations, and languages should serve and obey him. I'll show you that in just a second. Till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and his hair as the hair like that, of his head like a pure wool, his throne like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth before him. Thousand thousand ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain. Wait a minute. Beast not slain. Oh, but watch. He is, but not his soul. And his body destroyed, but his soul is given to the burning flame. That's what he's saying. Remember when uh, in Revelation 19, well, I'll save that because I think we're going to get to that tonight. Let's see how we're doing. Okay, I may, I may make it tonight. Anyway, uh, at, at, in Revelation 19, it says, And the beast was taken with him, the false prophet, which wrought miracles before them, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. And these both were cast alive in the lake burning with the brimstone. In other words, their bodies were destroyed in the burning flame, but not their soul. They don't get soul death. Okay, let's go on. I beheld him because of the voice of the great words with the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. But he's not. Watch what happens. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. And what's the season and time? They're given a thousand years. Some of them are given a thousand years. At the end of a thousand years, Satan is loosed out of his prison. He goes out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea, and the wind upon the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camps, uh, camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Boom. Destroying both body and soul. That's the morning star. Let's go on. I saw in the night vision, to behold, one like the Son of Man came in the clouds of heaven. Now, this is the big question. When is this? I'm going to show you in a chart. And came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. What's this? That's the marriage supper of the Lamb. Brought him near before him, and there was given him dominion, glory, and a kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages should serve and obey him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom of that which shall not be destroyed. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head just troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked me the truth of all this, so he told me, and made me know the interpretation of the things. He says, These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron, that's Europe, and his nails of brass, that's Greece, which is part of Europe, okay, Greece, which devoured, breaking pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, before whom three fell. Okay, there we go. That's how you can identify the Antichrist. When he comes to power, one of the first things he does in his rise to become world ruler is he takes over, defeats three nations, pulls them up by the roots. Even the horn had I, well, let me back up. Uh, okay, and ten horns, verse 20, that were in his head, and the other which came up before whom three fell. Even of that horn had eyes, it's man, and a mouth spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. Now, what does that word stout mean? It means greater. And Maurice Sklar said he saw the Antichrist, most beautiful man he ever saw. Ken Peters said he saw him, most beautiful man, most handsome man he'd ever seen in his life. That's what they say about him. 
uh, David uh, Phillips said he was a young man, had dark hair, and they all say, they all have the same word, olive-colored skin. That's the way they describe the way it looks. David Phillips saw that he had kind of a short beard on. Okay. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints. That's straight out of Revelation 13. I'll show you in just a second. 13 or 18. I beheld the same war made war with the saints and prevailed against them. In Revelation 18, it says overcame them. Or is it 13? I think it's 13. Until the ancient of days came and the judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, the fourth kingdom shall be the fourth. Fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. We shall be diverse from all kingdoms. which shall devour the earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. What does that mean? Okay, so right now we are seeing floods and fires and tornadoes and hurricanes, all kinds of climate change. Well, the climate change garbage is just that, it's garbage. Actually, what is causing it is scaly wave. And Revelation says, Thou and for for thy wrath has come, that thou time that thou should judge the dead, that those should that should Judge the dead and those that have destroyed the earth. So there with this Thai technology, they actually destroyed the earth. There's other prophecies that said the earth turns upside down. Isaiah 24, the earth turns upside down, scatter the broad the inhabitants thereof. So this high technology with it, they literally destroy the earth. You may be saying, well, they got to live on it. No, the objective of Lucifer is not but for to kill, steal and destroy if Lucifer could kill everybody on earth, he'd be happy. Okay, so let's go back. Trade it down, break it in pieces, verse 24. And the ten, ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. And another shall arise after them. That's the Antichrist. And he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. Can't get it? That's the three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. So what does that tell you? It tells you that he has a high probability of being Russian. And he spake great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time, that's one year, times, that's two years, and dividing over time, or three and a half years, or 42 months, or 1260 days, however you want to cut it up. But the judgment shall sit. And they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given unto the people of the saints, saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations, I love that word. <laughs> In other words, his, inside him, his cogitations much troubled me. And my countenance changed. That's the appearance. It probably went white face before the way he saw it. But I kept the matter in my heart. Now, let's go to Revelation 13. Bingo. I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads. Now, eventually, that's going to be seven continents divided into ten global regions. Each global region has a ruler. Wait a minute, Stan. You just said that this is Europe, where they divide Europe into 10 regions. Each one has a ruler. Yes, that's true. And yes, this is true. Prophecy plays twice. I believe in the beginning, it'll be a European world government, but eventually it'll... But look, what? how much of the world does Lucifer want to control? Just Europe? No. He wants the whole world, okay? Having seven heads and 10 horns. And upon his horns... 10 crowns. So each one of these rulers had crowns. They were crowned by such, and he gave them power and seat and great authority, is what it's about to say here in just a second. Upon his horns, 10 crowns. Upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. That's a direct attack against God. So these 10 European regions, I say regions may be better than nations, are then having a ruler of each one of them. Each one of them are crowned, and each one of them blasphemes God. And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard. There's your Muslims again. His feet were as the feet of a bear, Russia. His mouth is the mouth of a lion. But what's missing? Uh, no eagle's wings. 
Hmm. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Now, I want to believe that just because the lion's there, that also means the eagle's there. Okay. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. Now, it's, he's not wounded in the head. He's saying one of those 10 global regional rulers will be killed or either that or appears to be killed. And probably he'll actually die simply because Antichrist doesn't mean against Christ. It means to be in place of Christ. He, he don't want to fight Christ. Instead, he wants to be Christ. He wants to sit in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. He wants all people, nations, and languages should serve and obey him. He wants to get the worship of God. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and a bear and a lion. Verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it went into death, his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. Now, whether he just got like wounded or something, came back to life, or whether he was magically healed, the point is all the world wonders after him. And that wonders means mesmerized or they're shocked at this guy. And they worship and the and they worship the dragon, which had gave power to the beast, and they worship the beast. Now hang on. What just happened? That's actually pretty important. It's easy to read by. So they worship the dragon. Okay, who's that? That would be Lucifer, which gave power to the beast. That's the Antichrist. And they worship the beast. Wait a minute. Did they worship Lucifer? Or did they worship the Antichrist? The answer is both. Because at this point, Lucifer has been kicked out of heaven. Woe to those that... Now I started saying another one. Uh, another verse. Get my verses tangled up sometimes. Uh, but he's kicked out of heaven in the middle of the tribulation. And he comes down and he is inhabiting the body of the Antichrist. And I believe the Antichrist is still in there too. But Lucifer is there because that's the primary thing he wants to do ever since he got kicked out. And that's what got him kicked out of heaven. Because he wanted to be like God. They worship the dragon, which gave power to the beast, and they worship the beast, saying, who's like unto the beast? Who's able to make war with him? A guy that can come back from the dead. And there was given him a mouse member that. There you go. I told you. I'll show you that in Revelation 13. I'll show you that in Daniel 7. Same phrase. A mouse speaking great things. Now, let's talk about that. Why would God specifically give the ability to be a great orator to the beast, the Antichrist. Why would he give that to him? It's a test. He wants people to turn and not take, not not worship him. Uh, I saw him on the sea of glass, and th those people that not worship his image, neither his name, no, not worship the beast or his image or receive his mark, nor the number of his name. So there's four things we cannot do. And he he is putting a test before us that we will not take the mark, worship his image, or the beast, or the number of his name. Don't do any one of those four, and you're in deep trouble. He's given a mouth speaking great things as a test, and blasphemies. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle. Uh, I think that's the next scripture. Let me back up. Mouth speaking great things and blasphemy. The power is given to him to continue 40 and two months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemed against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given to him to make war with the saints. Again, that was in Daniel chapter 7 too. And what does that mean? It means that America will fall. That is allowed. The Antichrist is allowed to do that. Then he makes war with the saints and overcomes them. That's the fall of America. The fall of America will start with an internal revolution in America started by the communists. Some of the people will start fighting against the government. The government would be busy with internal problems. Then from the oceans, Russia, Cuba, Nicaragua, Central America, Mexico, and two of the countries will attack and defeat America in one day in one hour. Now, Demetri how long, I'm not asking you to answer this, just to answer it in your head. How long did Noah's flood rain? How long did it rain? How long did water come down? And when they went into the promised land, they wandered for how many days? And because of that, they wandered in the wilderness for how many days, for how many years? And the answer to all of those questions is 40. 40 is one of the numbers for judgment. 
August the 3rd of 1984 was the day that, that Gabriel came to Dimitri and gave him the warning about America. Add 40 years to that. Uh, that would be August 3rd of 2024. Now, we do not know if the internal revolution is going to start in 2024, but it's a very good possibility. Verse 7. And it was given him to make war with the saints to overcome them. And power is given him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. Not just Europe. All kindreds, tongues, and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. How many? All that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. I'm glad there wasn't a period there. Whose name is not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Now, this is the verse I don't like. I don't like it because, you know, a Texas boy here, you know, I want to protect my family. And I want to do that the best way I can. But this is saying, if you turn people over to the New World Order, you get turned over to the New World Order. And it's also about to say, if you kill with the sword, you get killed with the sword. Meaning... If they're coming after you specifically because you haven't taken the mark of the beast, you are not to kill them. You're not to report to the New World Order, order people that have not taken the mark. Why would he do that? Because it's part of the blessings he's given to you. You know that almost all of the uh, apostles in the days of Jesus were not just killed. They were tortured. Well, that was part of their blessing. Why would he do that? Because they, okay, how's it worded? And uh, let's see. Um, and I saw thrones and they sat on them. And I saw the souls of those who beheaded for the witness of Jesus that had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, nor received his mark in the forehead or in the hand. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Meaning, sometimes, well, in another place, Revelation says, and be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So it's a test. Okay, let me go on. All that dwell upon the earth, verse 8, shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. Now the word patience means don't quit. Don't quit Jesus. In other words, when they come after you, because you don't have the mark of the beast, you want to say, I'm done with this. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't do it. Don't do it. Verse 11. And beheld another beast coming out of, the earth, out of the earth. This is the religious. This is the false prophet. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders. So that he make a fire come down from heaven on the earth in the side of the men. And I believe that's the same kind of fire that hit Mexico with, that hit Maui with, or hitting with forest fires right now. We're talking about not the power of man, but the power of satellites, what they put in satellites, things like that. Great wonders. So that he make a fire come down from heaven on the earth in the side of the men. And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the side of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. I believe that's a clone. I believe it'll part man, part alien, or part Lucifer. And it will probably be hooked into a quantum computer, which is of alien or Luciferian technology, and will have all the accumulated knowledge of all the world and everything in it. And it's going to open his mouth and blaspheme against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and the damn it, dwell in heaven. Let me go on. Power to give life unto the image of the beast, so the clone of the Antichrist, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. David Phillips saw it this way. He said he saw that the Antichrist commands, okay, he's the ruler of the world. So the Constitution out the window. All of the rules, all of the nations out the window. He's the ruler of the world. He commands all the people that have the mark 
to seek out, find, and kill all of the people that don't have the mark. That's what he saw, and that's what the Bible is saying there. He caused it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark on the right hand or in the forehead. And then no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let him that hath the understanding count the number of the beast, for it's the number of a man. His number is 600, three score, and six. And I'm running out of time. So let me jump to now. Let's go, let me show you something here. Let's go to, ah, keep doing that, man. Hmm. Okay, here we go. We want to go to Revelation 18. But I'm not going to have time to read all of it. But let me just show you something. Okay, so I know there are some people that don't believe Revelation 18 is talking about America. But I looked it up. The word great. Who is it that came up with this phrase? Who is it came up with that? Make America great again. And you see this word right here, great? In Revelation chapter 18, you find that word 10 times. Six of the 10 is specifically calling America great. I think that Donald Trump is what God got God to hang Mr. Babylon of the great on us. How do they see I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power? I believe this is the angel like the angel Michael is the archangel over Israel. I believe this is the angel over America. Having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon, the great. There you go. The great is fallen is fallen. I don't have time to go and explain all that. It's become the habitation of devils, a hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean, hateful bird. For all nations are drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, meaning America is the one like the Pied Piper that led all of the world away from Christ to the devil with all of our music, our movies, our porn. We, we've corrupted the world. Now, if I'm going to get where I want to go here, I got to move ahead here. So let me move ahead. Okay. So let me jump to here. Okay. I think. Yes. Okay. Verse 16. Saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed and finally in purple and scarlet, decked with gold, precious stones, and pearls. For in one hour so great riches has come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company of ships and sailors and his trade by sea stood afar off. And they cried when the smoker saw the smoke were burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, where it made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour she made desolate. And I gotta refer to my notes, make sure I'm giving you the right cut here. 20. Yeah, okay. All right. I was about to say it right. Okay. So from 19 back to 1 in Revelation is talking about the Russians attacking America. And the reason God does that is because of sins in the church. But starting in verse 20, this is where I wanted to get to right there. This is what God is doing. Remember, when God return, when Jesus returns, every mountain fled away, every island fled away, the mountains were not found. This is when he, I'm trying to think, where is that? Oh, no, we're not going to cover that, so let me, let me see if I can remember it. Um, and he remembered to give, uh, to give Babylon the cup of the of fierceness of his wine, of his wrath, and every mountain, fly, uh, every mountain, every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. That is talking about this same event here. In other words, this is uh, when Jesus returns for Armageddon. He remembers that he needs to destroy America. Rejoice over her, the heavenly holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. So the first judgment, the first is fallen, is because of sins in the church, the Russians attacking and defeating us. The second one is total destruction, and that's Jesus doing it. That's because she killed the Christians. There's like eight, 18 verses talking about this. But anyway, holy apostles, for God hath avenged you on her. 
Now, this is talking about America. So if, if I'm going to get where I want to go here, I got to keep moving. So this is the destruction of America at Revelation. Now, I'm going to stay. I'm not going to jump. I'm going to keep going here. So now here we are, the destruction of America at Armageddon. Mighty took us, took up a diversion. Okay, there's not going to be any more. Okay, now we're, we're, even though we've changed chapters, we haven't changed topics. We're still talking about the judgment of America. In her was found the blood of prophets and saints are all slain upon the earth. Very next verse is talking about rejoicing in heaven. I believe that this is where we go to the marriage supper of the Lamb which is about four months before Jesus returns for Armageddon. So at this point, I'll be able to show you a thing that this is about four months before Armageddon. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven. That's us saying, hallelujah, salvation, glory, honor, and power to the Lord, our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he has judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth of the fornication, and has avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. It's talking about us. Okay, we're now at the marriage supper of the Lamb. How do you know? Well, keep watching. All right, now we're on one. Let's go. I'm not changing the subject here. Now let's jump to verse six. And heard the word of the voice of great multitude. That's us. As the voice of many waters, the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Now, what does it mean when he reigns? Well, that means now he has been crowned king of kings and lord of lords. And where is he crowned? When is he crowned? The answer is, he's crowned at the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's what we just read in Daniel chapter 7, when they bring him before the Ancient of Days, and he's given dominion, glory, and a kingdom. For his dominion is everlasting dominion. His kingdom is that which shall not pass away. That happens at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Okay, so then, Stan, what you're saying is, there's no rapture, there's no one leaving until after the Russians attack America. Correct. Oh, really? You got verse for that? Yes, I do. So let's go on to the next verse. So it says, uh, verse 7, let's be glad, rejoice, give honor him for the marriage of the Lamb has come. That's the marriage supper of the Lamb. When does that happen? Pentecost. How do you know? Because Exodus 19 says in the third month, there's only one feast in the third month, and that's Pentecost. If you do some research on that, as I have. His wife had made herself ready, and her is granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. He said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. He said to me, These are the true sayings of God. I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said to me, Don't do that. All right, let me skip on to the next verse here. I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him is called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. What's this? This is Armageddon. This is Ezekiel 38 and 39. His eyes are as a flame of fire and his head were many crowns. Where did he get the crowns? Got those at the marriage supper of the Lamb, of which we got to see that. We are now leaving the marriage supper of the Lamb. He's about to get a horse. We're about to get a horse. Verse 13, he was clothed in vesture dipped in blood. That's his own blood. Take me a while to explain that. His name is called the Word of God. The armies which were in heaven followed him on white horses. That's us, along with the angels, okay? White horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that's the morning star, that with it he should smite the nations. He should rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress and the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. How did he get that? He just attended the marriage supper of the Lamb. And I saw an angel standing at the side. He cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven. This is straight out of Ezekiel 38 and 39. Come, gather yourselves together and enter the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses, and the flesh of them that sat on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war, that's Armageddon, against him that sat on the horse and his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before them, which, which he deceived them, 
that received the mark of the beast and them that had worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake burning with fire and brimstone. But what happened? Their body is destroyed and given to the burning flame, just like we read in Daniel chapter 7. But their soul is not. They don't get soul death. They're tormented forever and ever and ever, day and night. And the river was slain by the sword of him that sat on the horse, sword which proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Now, what was the other point I was going to make? Ah, okay. Let me jump. Let me jump. There. To here. We're about out of time. I got it prepared. Okay, so I've explained this many times. It's complicated, and I'm going to say what, what you need to do, if I can dig and greet you here, go to prophecyclub.com. Get this book. Get it. I'm, I'm just going to tell you, just, just like straight out, you need to get this book. Secret Door to Understand Bible Prophecy. Um, I got 30 revelations, had two visions, and, and, and one audible voice. And I believe that this is the book that God is going to use to explain to a lot of people. Right now, people don't want to hear about the last days. But you let a big earthquake hit, and a whole bunch of Americans are going to start waking up. And I believe God is going to direct them to this book, because in one book, this can catch them up and help them to understand Bible prophecy. Go to prophecyclub.com and don't just get one. One for 20 bucks. Don't do that. You get, you know, there's like a good deal. You get five of them for like 40 bucks or something like that. Anyway, that's what you want. All right, now let's jump to this here. Hang on. I'm going to try to do this in a fancy way. Yeah, I got it. Okay. So, the next time Jesus returns, he will come down in a lamb body on first fruits. And first fruits this year is on April the 25th. Then he walks around for 50 days. The everlasting gospel is preached right here. When the In a future time, when the Russian bombs, I think the Russian bombs come down here, we go up the same time. As the bombs come down, we go up. We go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. We are only given a wedding garment, and then Jesus is now crowned King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's given many crowns, a vesture dipped in his own blood, and a white horse. About four months later, how do you know it's four months? You remember the scripture in Matthew, no, John 4.35, that says there are four, yet four months until the harvest? See, it's four months from him getting crowned until the harvest. This is the grape harvest. Then we are given white horses along with Jesus and the armies in heaven. We return down here. This is the judgment seat of Christ, the day of the Lord, judgment by fire. Fire comes down and the sun, moon, and the stars are all dissolved. The All of the sin is dissolved off the earth. It goes to the center of the earth, sets the foundations, the mountains on fire. The hills melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. And the earth shakes like crazy for 10 days. And then from here to here, it shakes. Everyone alive is all judged right here, judgment seat of Christ. Then, 10 days later, people that are not in Christ, that are dead, go to the great white throne. We've talked about that many times. And then five days later, I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven of the first earth were passed away, and there's no more sea. Okay, see if I can get this right here. So my point is, America is about to have a black swan event. Now, what's that mean? Well, see, for many, many years, the world thought that there is no such thing as a black swan. All of the swans are white. All of a sudden, they found a black swan, and it just popped up just out of nowhere. So the definition of something happening to a nation or really something happening any place, but especially something that would be like a world event. It's called a black swan event because they didn't see it coming. But God has sent us a lot of warning. And if we can just believe and remember the warnings, then he's already warned us. So what is about to happen? 
according to the prophecies primarily given to Leslie, if this is a year, and I believe that it is, then at the conclusion of this Israel-Gaza war, you're going to see the Palestinians given a stake. And probably that will happen between April 25th and June 13th, which is the counting of the Omer. And the newspaper headline will read, Omer ushers in Palestinian state. Then I have 14 prophecies that say that if America splits Israel, God will split America. And they say that America will be split. Now, I don't know how bad it's going to be, whether it's just going to be a little minor earthquake <laughs> that opens the Great Lakes up down to Tupelo, Mississippi, and you say, that's a minor earthquake that'll kill millions of Americans. Yes, it will. Or a major earthquake that opens up the Great Lakes all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico, and then the tsunami hits the uh, east coast of America, and most of California, all the way up into Alaska, fall in the ocean. That's a major one. And that may very well happen this year before June 13th. That would be a black swan. In other words, people don't know it. Now, we've been trying to tell people about this for years and years. But since they don't know the voice of God, they don't know when God is speaking, they aren't able to tell the truth, or they aren't told the truth between a lie, they don't believe it. They don't hear it. They don't want to. It's called cognitive dissonance. That means don't confuse me with facts. My mind is made up. I don't want to hear about none of that end time. I don't want to hear none about scary stuff. I just want to go to ball games, have a good time, and spend all my money that I've been making. You know, that they just want to live life. The problem is they're about to be hit. And this big Nemadrid fault earthquake that I believe, apparently, I, mean, I can't say for sure, it's 2024, but probably. I'll put it at, how about 99%? <laughs> I say it's a 99% probability we're going to see an earthquake sometime between April 25th and June 13th. And the newspaper headline will read Omer Ushers in Palestinian State. The next day or the next few days, probably one of the week, the next earthquake will hit will be catastrophe. It's America. America will cry for all the world to help. And the next headline is one of America's greatest times of need. And then the next headline is Israel refuses help to America. And America's hurting. And that's when a lot of revivals will take place. That's when a lot of you folks, God is going to raise you up to start teaching and explaining about Bible prophecy. That's why we're doing this. I believe that's why he had me bring this message tonight. I mean, he did not want me teaching on 1 Corinthians tonight. No, I kept getting yawns. No, no. Talk to them about Bible prophecy because it's about to hit them. They need to know this. And I think that's the reason God has you folks on here tonight is so you can learn. So you can, matter of fact, let me pray for you. What did I do with my oil here? What did I do with my oil? Ah, got to knock several things over to reach it, but I got it. Okay. Lord, <clears throat> this is my anointing oil, and they're not here. But you told me that whoever I anointed with oil and prayed for them to receive the spirit of prophecy, that they would receive the spirit of prophecy that I received when I memorized the book of Revelation. So while I can't put the anointing oil on them, I'm asking you to reach out right now. Reach out and everyone, and I'll just ask you to just raise your hand. That way God can see you're asking for this anointing. Everyone that's raising their hand, whether they're watching recording or live, I ask you to touch them with your anointing and give them the spirit of prophecy so that they can understand and teach prophecy and use it to win souls for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Well, hey, <laughs> I'm amazed we got through that. We covered a lot of stuff in 32 minutes, man, a lot. Um, and I'm, I'm very complimented and very blessed to see 168 people on, I think it's YouTube, and then like 18 people on Facebook. And uh, what do we got? How many comments we got? Oh, here. Wait, wait. Maybe we, got a, maybe we got a question here. Hang on. Who is the Syrian, the spirit of, who's the Syrian, the spirit of number? Okay. 
first of all, I hear a lot of people say that they think Nimrod is the Antichrist. I don't think Nimrod, or I don't think a descendant of Nimrod is the Antichrist. Um, if you go back into, there, there is a... The, there is a reason you could say you could expect him to come from Syria because there's a scripture, since I got Bible open here, I'll just show you. That says the Assyrian Okay. It's not working. That's not what I want. Hang on, I got it, I got it. Here and here. Okay. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not ever afraid of the Assyrian. He's talking about the Antichrist. He shall smite thee with a rod and shall lift up his staff against thee after the man of Egypt. Uh, Yet for a very little while, and the indignation shall cease, and mine anger in their destruction. That's not the primary one. There's another one. Let me jump to it, show you. I will break the Assyrian in my land. So there is a reason to say that the Antichrist comes from Assyria. Now, he may be a Russian that comes from Assyria. I don't know how all that's going to work out. And upon my mounds tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them, and his burden depart from off of their shoulders and i don't seem like that was the only one for through the voice of the lord shall the assyrian be beaten down which smote with a rod oh this is talking about the end time because if you look at verse 33 it says the breath of the lord like a stream of brimstone doth kindle it that's talking about the morning star the assyrian shall fall by a sword I, yeah, that's why I thought. I think that's it. Okay, so uh, I do not think the Antichrist is Nimrod. He may be Syrian. That's a very high probability. And I can give you some scriptures and, and show you some reasoning for thinking that he's Syrian or from that general area. He could be living in Russia right now. I, you know, I don't know how that all is going to work, but I believe we'll know. When he's elected world ruler, and especially when we see him overcome three of the other ten nation confederacies or ten re other other ten nations of the ten nation regional home world government, when we see him come overcome those three, then we'll know for sure. But for sure, for sure, we will know when he goes and sets on the ark of the covenant, commands animal sacrifice to be stopped. An animal sacrifice starts a week from tonight, according to Hal Turner, in Israel. And they haven't sacrificed animals in Israel for almost 2,000 years. And here we are seeing in our lifetime, that's big. That's really, really big. So do I have a reason to say that we're probably going to see a Palestinian state this year? Yep. Probably we're going to see catastrophe hits America? Yep. New Madrid fault? Yep. Can I guarantee it? Nope. <laughs> Very good possibility, though. Enough so that it's important for you to send this program to your friends. And if they haven't asked Jesus into their heart, they better get after it. It's as simple as this. Just say, Jesus, forgive my sins. It's as simple as that. Jesus, forgive my sins. Say those words. Jesus, forgive my sins. Then say, Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus be my God. Doesn't have to be anything really fancy. Jesus forgive my sins. Jesus come into my heart. Jesus be my God. You get into the wrong fancy prayers, but I played racquetball with a guy one time, he's a Russian. And I've been trying to get him to come to church, trying to witness to him. He wouldn't hear of it. So finally, as we're walking in the racquetball court, I turned to him and I say, just say, Jesus be my God. Just say it. He said, Jesus be my God. Now, I don't know if that's all Jesus is going to retire or require, but it's a step in the right direction. It's better than not. Okay. So if 
you haven't asked Jesus into your heart, do so. Uh, should me and my family leave Baltimore, we're close to Washington. Let me say it this way. I can't tell you what to do, but I would say it this way. If I lived in California, I would move. If I lived up the Mississippi River Valley someplace, I would move. If I lived in a terribly blue state, such as Baltimore or Washington Corridor up in there, I would move. But at the end of the day, the only safe place is in Jesus. Because let, 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 me, let, me, let, me, let me correct your, your thinking just a little bit. I think all of us have thought, okay, I, you know, I don't want to have to be beaten. I don't want to have to be put in a barbed wire prison camp. I don't want to have to get my head cut off. We've all thought those things. But what we've got to do is get our heart in a place to where we can say, doesn't matter. They can kill my body, but they can't kill my soul. Just like Jesus said in Revelation 2, I believe it is, be faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Thou shalt have tribulation 10 days, but be thou faithful unto death, and I'll give thee a crown of life. That's the whole scripture. So I don't think that we should have the goal to try to live as long as we can or to try to live and make it to the end of the tribulation. I think our goal should be to help Jesus build his kingdom. If we help build his kingdom, then he's going to take care of our world. And if we wind up giving our life for him, I mean, I'm prayed, Lord, give me the opportunity to give my life glorifying your name. That's a pretty good prayer. Anyway, hey, we are 10 minutes afterwards, so I'm going to say God bless you. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, we'll come back on next Friday, 6.30 to 8.30 Central Time. God bless.